Hi, I'm Darlene. Welcome to another Digital Photo Mentor tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do noise reduction. If you're a photographer who generally uses low ISO for fear of lots of noise and grain in your high ISO images, this is a video you're going to want to watch. Stick around and I'm going to do a comparison and show you how to do it using four different software programs, Photoshop, Lightroom, Luminar AI, and Topaz Denoise. Stick around and see how easy it is and see which software comes out on top. Here we are inside of Lightroom. I'm going to use this as my base and then we'll branch off to the other programs and see how they perform on the same image. I've chosen this one on purpose because as you can see by the information up here, I've shot it at an extremely high ISO by accident. I did take another image at a lower ISO. You can see that my shutter speed was very high. So I did take another one which is less noisy, but this one is going to work great for demonstration purposes. So let's zoom in and have a look at this noise. So I've zoomed in. Let's go back to 100%. So I've zoomed into 100% and here you can see there's a fair bit of noise. If I go even higher, let's just make this bigger. What I'm looking for is how much detail there is in the sharp areas of the image, how much noise and, and specular. So what you're seeing um, in terms of noise is that sort of specular grainy look to the image. Like it's not smooth. You see there's different color speckles here and it looks like it's really spotted. That's noise. Okay. And it's a combination of uh, regular noise, which has no color and color noise where you can see these little green and pink and different color spots. Okay, so this is the original before I've applied any noise reduction. And I've already done some work on this one inside of Lightroom. So this is the version inside of Lightroom. This is as good as I could get it. So if we want to take a look at what settings I've used, I've applied luminance noise reduction, kept the detail fairly high because if you lower the detail, what happens when you increase noise reduction inside of Lightroom, basically any program, it's, it's basically looking for spots and it's, it's blurring. Okay. So if I go to the extreme here on the color and the luminance noise reduction, and I'm in the detail panel, if you can't find that, go all the way to a hundred, you'll see that the image starts to look extremely blurry. Right. So I want to keep that down a little bit. And with the color noise reduction in Lightroom, I want to just drag it up until I see none of those color spots. Because depending on the program, if we go too high, it actually starts to remove um, color in different areas of your image. So I want to just go as far as necessary to get rid of any of those color spots. Uh, 21 looks like it's doing the job here. Okay. Then you can sort of play with the other sliders, um, detail, the more detail you have, it's going to add some sort of JPEG or artifacts like you see here. If I zoom in even more, if I zoom in even more, you could see that it's starting to do some bizarre things here. Okay. Those are called artifacts. So you want to make sure that you again, balance. So it's a dance between adding noise reduction, keeping the detail, keeping some contrast, but as, as again, as you add more contrast, you get that noise or you get that pixelation or artifacts back. So you kind of have to find a balance between a uh, noise reduction and adding these details. And then with sharpening, I've added a fair bit of sharpening to make sure that I can keep this part of the image sharp because if I keep it off, everything is blurry. But you want to make sure that you use this masking slider in Lightroom. And if you want to see what it's doing, hold down the alt or option key without masking. It's sharpening the entire image and you're going to get more of these artifacts, especially in areas where you don't want it, like inside of um, these little detail areas. As I drag the masking slider up, I'm holding the alt option key. You can see that it's only applying to sort of the edges where I want the sharpening. So it's not applying sharpening in these, these little shadow areas a quick before and after of the sharpening and denoise. And you can see what it's doing. It's gotten rid of a lot of these speckles and it's done a decent job. Okay. So that's Lightroom alone. Now the next one, I actually opened it up in Photoshop. So I'm going to do that because I, the reason I did that in Photoshop is I can show you the Photoshop tools and also the Topaz denoise.
I've already pre-done some of these because when you're dealing with sharpen effects or denoise, some of the things that are working under the hood of these tools take a really long time to preview and to apply. So I've already pre-applied them so that we can take a closer look and see how they have done. So the first one I've done is I've used the reduced noise, despeckle, and the camera raw denoise filter inside of Photoshop, which is basically the same as in Lightroom. So if we just use that one, if you're only using Photoshop, that's what you're going to get. So I'll just turn these off and you can see what kind of job Photoshop has done. So uh, once again, you can see the color noise, a lot of the speckles in here. You can see how sharp the image is. And then when I turn the filters on, it's done a pretty decent job, but it looks about the same as what we had coming out of Lightroom. When I ran this filter through Topaz Denoise, now I'm doing these as a smart object. So what that means is I can go in and edit it at any time. So when I turn this one on, it's applying the Topaz Denoise filter, and I'm gonna zoom in even more so that you can see the difference. Look at the, the smooth effect here but it's still got lots of sharpness and color on this little lamp. Okay, so I'll turn it off. Look at the sharpness difference in the lamp. One more time. Much sharper in the Topaz version. And let's take a look at the noise over here in the shadow areas. So there's lots of artifacts in the Photoshop version and these sort of weird um, pixelated areas. And in the Topaz version, there's still a little bit of noise, but it's more, it's smoother and it's got less artifacts. Okay, so remember I said that I could edit this again at any time. So all you need to do is if you've applied it as a smart filter, I can just double click and open the Topaz plugin. Okay, so Topaz works as a plugin for Photoshop and or Lightroom. So if you have either of those products, you can use it, open the image from your preferred editor into Topaz Denoise, do the work you want to do and then save it back to the other program. So let me just move this around. Topaz products, uh, Denoise and Desharpen, tend to take a little bit of time to apply and um, update the preview as you saw there. Okay, so these are the settings that I applied here. Um, I'm going to choose one of the preset modes. So they've got three preset modes in here, Denoise, all clear and low light. Okay, Denoise gives you a bunch of sliders here that you can work with. You can click on this button up here and you have to hold it down to see the pre-processed version. And then when you let go, you'll see the preview with the Topaz filter applied. So you can see it's doing a really good job and it's even enhancing the sharpness of this lantern. Okay, so that's the Denoise AI tab. If you use the all clear tab, you have less options. You just basically have a few buttons to choose. You can choose low, medium, or high. As this is a really noisy image, I'm going to choose high, and I'm gonna choose enhanced sharpness high as well. Okay, the color noise reduction, I kept about the same as I did inside of Lightroom, and I'm recovering a fair bit of detail here. So you could play around with those sliders and see which works the best. So let's compare Denoise AI to all clear. So they're fairly similar, but I'm seeing a little bit of difference in this area. Watch down here and look at the sharpness of the lantern. So it's kind of a preference choice. Choose which one is doing the best job for you on your image. Now this one I'm gonna crank up fairly high and let's see how it does with low light. Again, you see the filter drawing, right? So that one's pretty good as well. They all look fairly similar, but you can see that this low light one has actually done the best job on the noise. It's absolutely fantastic. Okay, comparing to this one, there's still quite a bit of, of noisiness here, but there's a better sharpness on the lantern. So let's see if we can improve that over here. Drawing the preview again, that's better. Okay, so I'm really impressed with that. Look at the difference before and after. So now I'm gonna cl click apply. As I mentioned, there's a lot going on under the hood of these Topaz products. So it does take a little while to apply the changes and go back to Photoshop. So you can see it's only at 26% here. I'm gonna to go top up my coffee and I'll be back when it's finished.
I'm going to back in Photoshop and you can see that it has applied the Topaz Denoise filter and I'm just going to turn this layer off so you can see the difference between what I did in Photoshop like this and you see all these little artifacts and weird um, effects going on here to JPEG pixelation and the Topaz filter. It does a really fantastic job. So if you haven't watched my review of the Topaz um, Sharpen AI, I recommend doing that as well. I'll put a link to that review video below this one. If you want to know where I found these filters that I applied in Photoshop so that you could try them yourself, I do suggest doing your own test on your own images to see which one you prefer. I did also find in several images that I tested, uh, sometimes Lightroom did a better job and sometimes Topaz did a better job. But I found that Lightroom and Photoshop were almost identical um, in terms of the raw processor, which is the camera raw filter in Photoshop or the main processor in Lightroom. They're both running with Adobe Camera Raw. So the same processing engine. The other ones I applied are down here under the noise uh, it's under filter noise, right? And I did the reduced noise, despeckle, and the camera raw filter, right? So you can see those here. So I could do the same thing in Lightroom that I did in camera raw, despeckle, and reduce noise. Didn't really do a whole lot. You see that they really didn't do a whole great deal. If I turn them back on, there's not much difference. Let's hop back over to Lightroom. Let's do a comparison between the Lightroom version and the Photoshop one with the Topaz filter applied. I'll put these side by side and then I'm going to zoom into this area here. So you can see that there is less noise in the Lightroom version than the Topaz version, which I process with Photoshop, but there's also more detail in the Topaz one. So I can live with that level of noise, but I want to have this level of detail. I mean, look at how much clearer the actual part where the subject is, it's clearer, it's sharper, this one is more pixelated. So this competition for me, Topaz won. Now, of course, you're not going to be shooting at ISO 25,000 very often. I generally set my auto ISO on my Fuji X-T3 to a maximum of 6400. So I'm not usually going over that. So I have quite a few images shot at 6400. So I've got another comparison here. This is the original raw file and I'm zooming in to 200% so you can see the noise here. And I want to do a comparison again between Lightroom's noise reduction and Topaz. What I'm looking at is the noise in this area here in the blue on this column. So it's smooth areas of the image. And I'm looking at the detail in this, this fish um, little icon here and the detail on this light. It's, it's a big light fixture. In the Lightroom processed version, I'll zoom into the same area, you could see that it looks much smoother here, much smoother here, okay? but it's lost a bit of detail in this area. So if I go back to the original grainy one, you can see that the fish has lost some detail, this little plaque here, as well as the lamp itself. The final one I did, I already ran through Topaz Denoise and you can see the difference. Look at the fish. This is Lightroom and this is Topaz. Okay, the Lightroom one has actually even lost some color. So the original is much brighter red. This is the unsharpened or undenoised version. Lightroom denoised version. It's lost some of its saturation of color and the Topaz version has more color here, has more punch has a little bit of noise, but not as much as the original. Okay, so it's gotten rid of a lot of the original noise to an acceptable level that I find acceptable with, while it still kept a lot of the detail. If you look up in here, okay, see the detail and the contrast in this area compared to the Lightroom version, it's kind of blurred out. Okay, so there's no comparison there. And once again, for me, Topaz wins hands down. I have one more example comparison for you with Lightroom and Topaz. This one was shot at 3200 ISO. And what I'm looking at in this one is did it keep the detail? Okay, so there's a lot of detail and this is the original on the left here, original raw file, and it have not applied any sharpening or um, noise reduction. So you can see there's a fair bit of noise in here. 
But what I'm looking at is how much detail is in this little, looks like a pot or something, a teacup. Okay, so I'm looking at the amount of detail. I'm looking at the amount of noise here in the shadow areas. And I'm looking at the amount of detail in this kind of stuffed pig. And is it removing the shadows? So this is without any, okay? The one on the right is the topaz version. You can see that there's lots of detail in the fur. There's lots of detail in this little cup here. And there's a fair bit of noise reduction done here, but it's not gone to blur, okay? When I try and do the same thing in Lightroom, I hop over to the develop module here. Again, this is the detail panel. I've already applied some settings previously. So just let me turn that on. Look at what happens here. If I crank up the noise, the noise reduction, like I did in Topaz, it becomes a big giant blur, almost like an artistic um, impressionism type of image. So if you like that look, we can get sort of this painterly quality. But if you want detail in your images, this is definitely not it. So I have to turn the noise reduction down quite a bit and I have to turn sharpening up and then you end up with those artifacts again. So if I zoom in even farther, you can see that there's some weird things happening here. I'm getting those artifacts and there's not so much detail in here. So I can crank up the detail on the sharpen and I get more artifacts or I can crank up the detail on the noise reduction, but it's not anywhere close to what I've got in the Topaz one. So this is the Topaz edit. Look at how much detail there is here. Look at the detail in the fur. There's no artifacts. It is doing a far superior job than Lightroom did by itself. I want to show you one more example, and that is Luminar. As you can see, I have the same image here in Luminar that we just worked on over in Lightroom. So if you are new to Luminar, this is the newest version, Luminar AI. But these tools are similar in Luminar 4 and older versions as well. So if you have one of those, you should be able to find the similar filters and tools. So obviously denoise is the one we're going to use to remove noise. And all I've done for this image is cropped it and added a little bit of vignette. Otherwise, I haven't done any processing. This is straight out of the camera. So I'm going to zoom in all the way to 200 like we did in Lightroom so we can see it real close up on this same area. Now I've already applied a little bit of noise reduction and also details. So details, uh, similar to the detail panel in Lightroom, that's where you do detail and sharpening, right? But denoise is a separate panel in Luminar. So I've applied liberal amount of luminosity denoise, a little bit of color as I did in Lightroom and a boost, okay? So if I want to go farther, I can take it a little bit higher with this boost slider here. Overall, I feel like Luminar's done a pretty good job. You can do a before and after using the eyeball up here, hold, click and hold it, or using the slider, which in this case works well. So this is after, and this is before. So you can see there's a fair bit of noise and lack in detail and uh, in the fur and in this little cup here, it's part of a float. Now there's lots of detail. There's even enhanced contrast. Okay, see that? Look at the enhanced contrast on the fan. I personally like to do my before and afters with the backslash key because then I can see the whole thing and what it's doing overall. So what I've applied are medium detail slider, fairly medium to liberal, a little bit of large details, a little bit of sharpening, and then I've adjusted the masking and the radius of the details and the sharpening. So before and after again, noise, less noise, and if I turn the detail panel off, you can see that it does look blurry. So the denoise or the noise reduction inside of Luminar is doing exactly what I described earlier. It's causing a lot of blur. So you bring back those details by the, using the details sliders in the details panel. On this one, I feel that Topaz and Luminar are actually fairly similar. Luminar has done a very nice job of retaining the details while still removing the noise to a usable level. Let's take a look at that one that was shot at 25,000 ISO and see how Luminar is done on this one. I've applied a few more edits here to make it match more closely to the version in Lightroom, but the ones we're concerned about for this tutorial are the denoise and the details panels both of which you'll find in Essentials under um, Luminar AI and also for Luminar 4. Let's do a quick before and after. Before, keep in mind that's before 
all my editing, but looking particularly at the amount of noise. I'll zoom in a little farther. So where I'm looking in particular for the noise is this area below the lantern here and keeping the area of sharpness on the, this lantern with the red and the black because right? it's got a really well-defined edge on the painting on the lantern. So I want to make sure that that's kept sharp. So let's look at before again. Keep in mind I've corrected the color balance here, the white balance and after. So it's done not a, not a bad job considering it's 25,000 ISO. Comparing all three or all four options on this image, which was the hardest of all of them, I would still say that Topaz... Comparing all four softwares, Lightroom, Photoshop, Luminar, and Topaz on this image, which was the hardest one, the most, most challenging one for them to handle, Topaz definitely came out on top. So if you use Lightroom or Photoshop, I would recommend getting Topaz Denoise and adding it to your arsenal as a plugin, and then you can use it on the images that are toughest like this one. If you can get over that hump of feeling that fear of high ISO and allow yourself to shoot into 3200, 6400, Topaz Denoise will give you a little bit more latitude in your shooting as well. So be brave, shoot some high ISO, and give Topaz Denoise a try. If you're using Luminar or another product, you can't use Topaz as a plugin, but what you could do is you can export a TIFF from the software of your choice, such as Luminar, or if you're using something like uh, Exposure or On One or DxO, export it from that program as a TIFF, run it through Topaz Denoise as your last step, then you can still use that software in your workflow. I hope you found this tutorial of noise reduction and review of Topaz Denoise helpful. My personal preference when shooting is of course to use a low ISO whenever possible, but sometimes you just need to use a higher one in order to keep your images sharp. Because I would rather start with a little bit of a noisy or grainy image knowing that I can use software like this to help reduce it later than perhaps get a blurry image because I used a lower ISO and a shutter speed that wasn't quite fast enough to combat things like camera shake. So be brave, increase that ISO when you're shooting, grab Topaz Denoise, and you're good to go. Until next time, keep shooting, keep practicing with your processing, and I'll see you soon.